A man's thrift shopping takes an emotional turn when he buys an old camera from a flea market and finds a note inside with instructions to find a girl named Susie Berger. When Sam Wilkinson was browsing the flea market that Sunday morning, hunting for the next camera to add to his collection, he had no clue he'd stumble upon something that would touch his life. He'd bought a camera from a fragile man who wasn't particularly old, but his eyes were etched by dark circles and his complexion was pale as if he was sick or terminally ill. The camera you're getting's rather a special one, he'd send when Sam bought it. Good luck. Sam inspected the camera closely, but it didn't strike him as particularly unusual. It looked like one of those old-fashioned cameras that worked in phonographic films. He bought it without hesitation because he didn't have one like it in his camera collection and because the man had given to him for a few bucks. At home, he was cleaning the camera before putting it on its glass shelf where he frequently kept or rather proudly exhibited his thrift store purchases when he clicked open its back cover and discovered a strip of film inside. At the market, it didn't dawn on him to check the camera properly, but now that he was patiently cleaning it, he was surprised to find the film inside as well as a note tucked beneath it. Who keeps a note in the back of a camera? He first took out the film and held it against the light to see whether there was anything visible on it, and to his amazement, he discovered there was. It appeared to be a photograph of a little girl. Then he went ahead and opened the note and found a strange message scribbled on it. Please help me find Susie Berger, age 19 years. If you find her, please tell her that her father loves her. As Sam read the message, the words of the man from whom he bought the camera began to ring in his ears. Good luck. He wished me luck. It means he knew there was a note inside, Sam guessed. Or wait, was it he who put it there? I gotta find him. The next day, Sam returned to the flea market in search of the man. He passed through several stalls, but the man was nowhere to be found. He walked all the way to the far end several times, but it was futile. At last, he sat down on the sidewalk defeated, thinking he wouldn't be able to uncover the mystery of the note. Just then he noticed them. The man was right there preparing his stall. Without further ado, Sam approached him. Hey, I want to ask you something. I bought this camera yesterday. So did you find her? The man asked, his voice trembling. Did you tell her what was written on the note? Excuse me? Did you manage to track down Susie Berger? The man asked with hopeful eyes. That's what I want to ask. Why'd you leave the note inside and who's Susie Berger? Sam noticed the man's eyes welling up. Do you promise me you'll find her if I tell you why? Ah oh, man, Sam hesitated. Okay, cool. Tell me what's up with this Susie Burger. The man pulled a chair he was selling in front of him and requested Sam to have a seat. Then he spoke. My name's Timothy Burger, and Susie Burger's my daughter, my Cinderella whom my wife stole from me. Her photos are on the film you must have already discovered inside. What? She's your daughter? Sam's eyes widened in surprise. Timothy gave a nod. It all started when my wife Cynthia forced me to divorce her some years ago. She jumped me because I was only a carpenter and I couldn't meet her lavish demands. She married a wealthy man and stole Susie away from me. She told that little girl I was the one who abandoned them, which is why my Susie never spoke to me or met with me again, he managed to say before breaking down in sobs. I'm so sorry. Timothy wiped his tears and held Sam's hand in his. Do you promise to help me find her? Please, I don't have enough time. Three, no, two, two months is what the doctor said. That's why I left the note in the camera hoping somebody would find her and tell her I love her. Wait, two months? I don't… I have cancer, young man, and I don't have much time. Please help me find her. Sam's heart dropped as he heard that. He thought for a while then said, I promise I'll try my best to find Susie for you, sir. I promise that. Timothy hugged Sam and burst into tears. Thank you so much. That afternoon after returning home, Sam called his father and asked him for help. Hey dad, could you do me a favor? Sam's father was a lawyer and he had friends in the police. He told him what happened and Mr. Wilkinson immediately agreed to help him. He called his friend Detective Franklin County and shared all the evidence Sam had sent him through email. But weeks passed and there was still no word of Susie. Sam's heart sank as he wondered what would happen if he couldn't keep his promise to Timothy. What if he couldn't find Susie in two months? But one fine morning, he received a call from his father informing him they located her. Sam went straight to Timothy and requested that he join him at Susie's house. This is your chance, sir, to tell her the truth, that you love her and didn't abandon her. You can do it. Timothy was hesitant, but Sam motivated him and he finally agreed. When they arrived at Susie's house, Cynthia answered the door. She was shocked to see Timothy, all pale, emaciated, and frail. You, what are you doing here? Please, Cynthia, let me see Susie, I… Before Timothy could finish, Sam cut him off. I think it's best to go inside and talk, ma'am. For some reason, Cynthia softened, probably because of how frail Timothy looked, and brought them inside. Sam told her everything that had happened, and Cynthia burst into tears, much to Timothy's amazement. She called Susie downstairs and told her to talk to Timothy. But why, Mom? Susie retorted. He's a terrible man. Don't you remember how he abandoned us? 
Why would you even invite him inside? Tell him to get lost. Susie, Cynthia screamed at her. You're not aware of the truth. Actually, it's my fault that I never told you the truth. I never had the guts to accept it, but... Cynthia admitted that she was the one who had abandoned Anthony, not the other way around. She also said that she was foolish to leave him because the man she'd abandoned Timothy for had dumped her because he didn't want to care for Susie. For the 19-year-old Susie, it all came as a shock. I can't believe you did that, Mom. I hate you. Dad, I'm so sorry. I had no idea about any of that. Timothy hugged Susie and said, I'm so delighted to have my Cinderella back. So my princess do one last thing for me? It's not like I have much time. I have cancer, honey, but I'll keep bothering you for two months, hopefully. Oh my God, Dad. Susie started crying and hugged him back tightly. Don't hate your mom after I'm gone, honey. She wasn't the best wife, but she always loved and cared for you. She proved she was a great mother. You're not going anywhere, Dad. Nothing will happen to you. Susie cried as she hugged him. Even Sam couldn't hold back his tears as he witnessed the bittersweet reunion. Unfortunately, Timothy died a month later. Sam, Susie, and Cynthia attended the funeral, and from that day on, Susie visits her father's grave every year with his favorite flowers. Recently, she held an exhibition in her father's honor inspired by him. She majored in photography in university after learning how much Timothy enjoyed photography during his university days. Yes, Timothy loved photography, which is why he'd kept the camera where he'd stored Susie's photographs, the special camera that reunited a father and daughter. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with someone who may find it interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.